Hello, it's Austin Jarrett from Alec Mowers. This is episode five of our lawn renovation project. We weren't really happy with the amount of weeds and the colours that we were getting in our lawn and we decided we were going to choose some lawn seed and we weren't entirely happy with the information we were given because we didn't really understand the type of lawn we were going to get. So we've actually sown six different varieties in the garden and we're going to go through that whole journey. Here we are now, eight weeks since overseeding. If you haven't seen the previous episodes, then they're worth a watch. Uh, but you can start to see now that we've got a lawn back and it's looking okay. We're going to go and have a look now at the trial tubs, which give us a more intensive look at the different varieties that we've got. And today we're going to be cylinder mowing and we're going to give it a quick verticut as well and I'll talk to you about the reasons why we're going to do that. So let's go and have a look at the tubs. So here we are, eight weeks on, and you can start to see now the real different characteristics of each of the different mixtures. So these two are the fine mixtures where we've got 90% fescues, 10% bents. This one's an 80% fescue and 20% brown top bent. You can see definitely a lot finer sort of feel, it feels more like stroking hair. Then we've got ones with uh, uh, that are predominantly ryegrass, this is a quality one, we're talking about more general purpose quality lawns, uh, we've got 70% ryegrass and 30% uh, fescues and you can see now the fescues are starting to come through, the, the ryegrass definitely came through first. Uh, and in this one here, which you can see is significantly greener than all the others as well, and they've had all exactly the same treatment. We're down to a 40% ryegrass on this one, 35% slender creeping red fescue, 20% chewing fescues, and 5% now with brown top bent in here. 100% uh, ryegrass, and this was really the quickest, uh, most uh, quickest establishing of the six different uh, mixtures and then this one is the one that's in the shade. Uh, not such a good test for this one because it's in the full light rather than in the shade um, but actually in the sample itself it's really coming on. It was the slowest to get going but now it's warmed up and we've got uh, plenty of water on. It really seems to be coming into its own so steady uh, but it's definitely going to be getting there. So what I want to look at actually is uh, in the sward. We're starting to get a bit of a problem and of course the reason we did this trial was because we weren't happy with the weed levels in the original lawn. The idea was, was to kill off the lawn, overseed with varieties that we knew so that if we got patches uh, that, that died either because of urine or, or we were killing off weed patches that we would have the seed to be able to replace areas and we'd get the lawn looking great. Uh, but what I do want to have a look at is the weed infest infestation. We've got now eight weeks on and how I've really got to get on and do something about this now. So here we are on an area of lawn that's really established quite well. But of course we do have a problem. And already we're starting to see the weed grasses come through. And at the moment they're just fairly small plants, these weed grasses. The first one I want to talk to you about is about the poa annual. So what does poa annual look like? And you can see here it's quite easy to spot because of the seed heads. So if I dig this plant out, which is what I'm starting to do, I'm taking a knife, I'm cutting around the base of the plant so I can lift out the, ro the roots of this. And what I've done is I've now plucked out quite a large area just in one plant. I'm mowing this at about 40 millimeters just here, but you can see already some of this grass is already six inches, 150 millimeters long, but of course it's lying flat in the sward and it's giving the opportunity for it to go to seed. And we have these seed heads, which are so uh, characteristic of the annual meadow grass. So that's annual meadow grass, Poa pretensus, and sorry, Poa annua. <laughs> And the, um, the poa annua itself 
is just, if you want to talk about a plant that is a survivor, this is the plant that you see growing in the, uh, between paving stones in gutters through tarmac. And this will survive pretty much anywhere. Very shallow rooting and you'll notice it at different times of the year in your lawn because it's a little bit yellow and the leaves are coarse. But how this reproduces, uh, the, the plant itself only lasts for one year, that's the annual in annual meadowgrass, but what it does, it is a prolific seed producer. So this is flowering and seeding up to every 10 days, uh, it's producing hundreds of seeds per plant, and of course a percentage of those will germinate this autumn, and I'll end up with a growing situation of of uh, Poa annua on this lawn. So I need to do something about this now, even though this sward is only eight weeks old. It is really prolific. And one of the things that we've learned is to get an early established good sward is actually the most important thing. I need my plants that I want. In this case, it's uh, it, it, it's uh, a 60% ryegrass in this quality one lawn and 40% creeping slender red fescue. I need to get that established as early as possible because these are growing wherever there's a gap and there's poor establishment. We're actually doing a program of two things in order to overcome this. The earlier I do it while the lowest number of plants ever at this early stage, I can tackle it and really start to make a difference. I am literally going around with the kitchen knife, uh, don't tell the wife, and I am digging each one of these plants out that I see them. I generally are seeing them because of the seed heads and I'm plucking these out. And out of this lawn, I'm plucking hundreds and hundreds of these. The easiest way to do it is, of course, and this is the importance of good mowing, is that what I need to do is I need to get the seed heads collected and in the grass box. So very regular mowing, 10 day cycle remember, very regular mowing and collecting the grass clippings. Uh, and secondly, what I'm gonna do is more regular verticutting. So even though these plants are quite young, what I need to do is to get these seed heads to stand up in the sward and then I can mow them off and get these seed heads interrupted in their life cycle so that next year I'm not just gonna have an even bigger problem that I can't come back. So I'm onto this really, really early. Of course, once I've removed those weeds, because I wanted to remove the roots as well, I've taken a chunk of soil. And so I need to now just fill in the holes to some extent. I don't want the seed in too deep, otherwise it won't germinate. So I'll just fill in the bottom of these holes. And then what I'll do is, of course, I know exactly the seed mixture now. That's the advantage of what it is that we've done. Make sure the seed's not sitting on the grass, that it's contacting the soil. And then I just need to put a, a covering over those seeds and I'll get this watered and I'll put the seed that I really want back into its competitive position and make sure that we keep this sward nice and thick so we don't have any gaps in it where the annual meadow grass will take over. The second grass weed which has been infesting this eight week old lawn is Yorkshire fog. Yorkshire fog is a much broader leaf weed and it normally is identified by the hairy leaves that it has. But again, it's another flat growing uh, grass weed which slips underneath the mower and then just continues to spread. This one is not as bad to deal with as the annual meadow grass. The reason for that being is it, this is a bit of a lightweight compared with annual meadow grass. It really doesn't like agitation, it doesn't like traffic, and often good continuous verticutting as part of your lawn maintenance will keep this under control. But there's no doubt while the lawn is in this state that actually I can pull these 
grass weeds out. I'm cutting and removing some of the root and actually these will be gone in no time at all. But you can see how this is starting to spread from one quite small plant and that I need to get these eliminated as quickly as I possibly can. There's no seed heads on these, so it's not spreading on a, on a 10 day seed head cycle, but all the same, I need to get rid of these weeds where I can, and I can hand pull them like this uh, with as much root as I possibly can. Or what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get verticutting. Verticutting, it doesn't like, and then on top of that, while the grass is stood, stood upright, I can mow it and reduce the amount of leaf that it's got for that essential photosynthesis so that it's just nowhere near as competitive against these beautiful ryegrass plants that we really want to see. So we can dig these out all individually and already there are thousands. I'm, I'm definitely going to be on a losing battle and so we need to contain this grass as best as we possibly can. So in the annual meadow grass, the seed heads here are the things that we're going to try and collect and make sure that those aren't seeding ready for next year to attack us then. Uh, and one of the cultural practices which are really accepted is the use of a verticut. And I have the verticut cartridge here. You can see these blades, steel blades, and what they're able to do is to cut into the sward. And what they'll do is with these grassy leaves that you can see in the stalks, you can see how high this actually is. If I can take that and get it standing upright, it's gonna be so much easier to be able to mow that off and be able to collect that seed head so that it doesn't seed for next year. So let's see how that goes. So I've used the verticut now to go in two directions and the reason being that the, the annual meadow grass plant grows from a single point and then grows flat like this. So I need to be able to get as many of the leaves as I can by going in multiple directions to get them all to stand up. Remember I'm trying to harvest these seed heads and reduce the impact of the, of the reseeding of this grass weed. So you can see now with a couple of directions that these heads are now standing proud and I'm now going to put the cylinder in and I'm going to mow down nice and close and see if I can harvest these seed heads and get them off my lawn. So after we've mowed now at a, at a height which was aimed to try and capture as many of these seed heads as possible but approximately the same height as the, as the grass has been cut previously, I am able then to go into this grass box to demonstrate that we are actually clipping off these little seed heads uh, that that we're now standing more upright because of the, the verticutting action. So that's encouraging. I'm going to make sure I dispose of those and they get taken away from the site because I never want to see them again. We wanted to make sure that these sample tubs were treated in exactly the same way as a lawn would be treated. So we've just rigged up this extremely crude framework here so that the, we're at ground level at the top here and I'm, I'm able to run the mower across tops of the grass and make sure that's right. We can do individual height of cut changes that we need to. Some of these we are able to mow lower than others and we might get quite different results. So we'll see what happens but uh, you just take a look at what it is that we're doing with this. So thanks for joining us for episode five. Just to recap the learning, so far, eight weeks into our new seed project, uh, early germination and getting an established sward is so important for making sure that the grass weeds that we don't want are in a high compete situation and don't get started. When the grass weeds inevitably come in, you can either hand pick those for a small lawn, for a bigger lawn, we're going to be working on a program now of verticutting and mowing. At eight weeks, we've started to cylinder mow in order to start to, to develop the sward, make it thicker and get the lawn stripes, of course, that we really want to get. We're going to be verticutting weekly, standing the grass plants upright, especially for the annual meadow grass, where we want to be making sure that we harvest with the grass box on 
and clipping off those annual metagrafts seeds in order to break this cycle of new seeded heads which will come and germinate for next year. The verticut also works well on the Yorkshire fog, those broader leaf weeds, because they just don't like the traffic. We can cut the leaves off as well. We can stand them upright. We can cut them off with the verticut too. So now we're just going to be mowing. We're going to be verticutting, keeping this lawn under control, letting it develop and thicken up. We're going to be using good regular fertilizer application as well so that we can get a really good established lawn in this first year. Thanks ever so much for joining us. We'll see you again soon.